Eric. Eric from Showreel. Hey, Hello. Hey, Eric nice Jackson. to meet you. Nice to meet Hi, you. Eric right. Vellante. Good to meet you. Pleasure, man. Come on in. Okay, Eric Jackson uh, with Showreel International. Um, you guys, uh, NAB's your, like, home here, right? That's I mean, it. How late were you out last night schmoozing with all the Ooh. clients and doing production uh, deals? I was so sleeping all night. <laughs> <laughs> we tell about rest. In so, Vegas. <laughs> so tell us about Showreel real quick, and then we're going to go into some of the dynamics around the marketplace. Obviously, um, you know, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting some production shop these days that uh, claims they do this, that, and the other thing. So let's go into what you guys are doing, and then we'll talk about the industry landscape. Sure. So uh, Showreel is a full-service production company. We're located in the heart of Hollywood. We've been there a very long time. Um, we started in commercials, and today uh, we're doing a lot of corporate work. And um, more and more every day we're doing content creation. So having the tools to help us excel in the field is, is really wonderful. When I started, uh, everything was proprietary. You had to have big money to compete. And today we're competing with the biggest uh, production and post companies out there. So we were talking last night about the success of like things like Hunger Games and the, the big shops. Well, they needed that when uh, Lionsgate did. But uh, you know, other shops, the big shops, the continue to get bigger but they don't necessarily become in-house, and, and the middle guys are kind of dying away. So at the, at the other end of the market, you have a lot of specialty. Can you talk about the dynamics and the landscape? And, and you guys, the, the big shops do still work with a lot of these other shops, so how does all that play out? What's the dynamics, and is it working? Well, it's, uh, our marketplace is a little different. We're not doing Hunger Games, although who knows someday, but um, our specialty, like I said, is um, corporate video. And what we find in the corporate arena is there is a void that um, they want to produce great work for the most part. Um, they don't always have the budget, so that's where we come in. And being able to figure out, you know, you have, you know, the budget ranges are anywhere from twenty dollars to $100,000. We used to shoot a 30-second commercial for $200,000. So we've uh, buttoned up the shop. We uh, work a lot harder, fewer people. But really what we do is we, we rely on technology um, along with our skills to be able to produce um, great products for our clients. We have basically two choices for our clients. Uh, the first is you have X amount of money, that's what you're going to get, and that's not the way we operate. So um, leaning on our talents and the tools, we're able to deliver far superior products than um, the budget. So I think uh, the days of really bad corporate video, are they're definitely diminishing because there's a lot of uh, technology and a lot of talent out Thank there. Thank gosh. Uh, so how about uh, the tech? Talk a little bit more about that, the, the technology behind it. What are, the, what are some of the cool things that might resonate with the audience? Um, cameras. Cameras are uh, key. You know, the, the technology, the DSLR revolution really kind of opened the door for stunning mm. images. And um, we shoot anything from DSLRs to, you know, I'm a, a lover of high-speed photography, so we just shot some epic stuff, and it's beautiful. Um, the biggest, at, the biggest, I think, game changer for us is the post-production workflow, and um, the speed of processors these days, computers, the, the, uh, the tools, the plugins, and everything that we put into play, um, it's so, so valuable. Um, for me, the biggest, the biggest technology uh, that we've been relying on lately is the mobile platform, and it's really just a great advantage to be able to be in the field, see your project come to life, and make necessary adjustments based on being able to see things instantly. So mobile is part of your normal workflow? It absolutely and, is and, now. And, and, and that's not just some kind of cool demo? You're actually using mobile no, no. as part of the flow? Absolutely. Talk about that a little bit. Well, when I first started uh, using mobile technology, it was really so after the shoot, I can go home and uh, get something done so I can sleep at night, make sure we had it in the can. So it was a little bit of an insurance factor. But more and more today, there, there are tools that I use in the field. Um, one of the examples is we just finished a project for Levi Strauss and Company, and we were pinning graphics uh, to, to work them into the scene. And um, we put one in a frame, and we shot in this beautiful house, and there's this big picture window, and we wanted the graphic right in there. So we framed it up, and we had a lot of room on the right. So the editor put it in the frame. Well, we were able to on set, pin it, and we looked at it, and we decided we wanted the graphic to be bigger, so we needed to adjust our framing. And that took just a matter of minutes to reshoot it, um, spit it out of the computer like that, and uh, away we go on to the next shot. Makes uh, it's an insurance policy for me, and makes our producer happy because we can do it fast. So and she's happy. And your cost too. I mean, your cost there plummet. It's Time to shoot, post-production edit. You oh. got it. Oh, you got crazy. it. I mean, it's you, you guys know production. It's uh, it's all about getting it done, getting it done yeah. right. But most importantly, staying on schedule. Got it. What do you? What are the cool things you're working on? You mentioned Levi Strauss. What other cool projects can you share with the folks out there that have that? You know, the photography, which is really about engaging the audiences. And you know, the corporate guys don't necessarily have the skills in house as well to do that. But that's the key right now in this world is engaging, yeah. having something that's so compelling and elegant and beautiful, but yet 
does the job and gets messages across. What are the, some cool things? Yeah, I can't talk about the specific projects, but some of the um, types of projects we're doing are some pretty heavy-duty investor relation videos. So a couple big Fortune 500 companies going to Wall Street, and in doing so, they really have to present this gold image, this really solid image. So. You know, not, nothing schlocky. It's got to look like a 30-second commercial, but it's got to be three minutes of uh, beautiful photography, succinct message. Um, great sound. So, <laughs> great, <laughs> great everything. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, yeah, we'll go in and uh, we'll look into the heart and soul of the employees and the corporation. But more importantly, we're delivering um, broadcast quality, things they would see, you know, not Channel 800, but primetime television. And I think if you do anything less for the audience, you've lost them. They're just used to seeing such great work out there. So when you're trying to deliver a message, you have to engage them. You have to engage them. What's your advice to folks out there? Obviously, there's a lot of new, I wouldn't call them indie, but you can call them indie. I'm calling them indie, right? and individuals. Consumers are out there shooting great stuff with iPhones. We saw some uh, demos last night with you know, the skateboarders. We're going to see some around from here in the in, in this set here. Um, not everyone's a guru of photography and you know, it was the shaky camera. Now I can have a 7D and I could go out and do some amazing photography. Now as video, I can shoot pretty compelling stuff. But it, it's not just shooting, right? Yeah. So take us some advice from the shooting piece and then some workflow kind of optimizations. You well, everything we do, there's a reason. We're not just, you know, today I feel like being shaky and tomorrow I'm going to be on a techno crane. Um, everything plays into the message. So it's really important to understand what that message is and the feel you're trying to convey and play into that. The Levi Strauss uh, project was particularly challenging in that regard because it represented three brands, Levi's, Dockers, and Denizen. So with each one of those, we shot it different. So a lot of the Levi's stuff was shaky. The Dockers was very smooth and fluid. So I think um, know the tools, understand how to use them, and don't get stuck in, in one kind of vision and pigeonhole that way, and apply the appropriate creative to the project. For the uh, corporations out there that, that haven't worked with a level of firm like you guys, what, what would you tell them to look for as kind of table stakes of um, minimums that they have to see when they talk to potential suppliers in this area of the studios? Oh, that's a good question. And you don't have to just <laughs> see this here, but No, no. I mean, because, you know, there are, it's confusing. They send RFP and then, you know, projects got to get done, but there are minimum table stakes that have to be addressed now that, yeah. that the consumers expect. I, I've seen RFPs written so many different ways from, uh, we need a lighting package. And that's it. How do you bid? We need a lighting package. So I think it's really important that um, corporations don't look at it like they're buying pencils. It's not a pencil. Really understand um, what you're looking to do, how somebody creatively is going to bring that to life. And um, most importantly, look at their history. Look at their work. What you see is what you're going to get. And make sure they're not five-second clips of montage put together. You know, let's see full projects. Let's talk to clients. Really do your due diligence in hiring a production company. Um, and, you know, it'll work out for you. The classic ask for references and look at some work. Uh, my other question for you is more of on a personal note. Obviously, you're here with your creative and also experience in, in doing the business outside of the studio. What is your view of NAB here, the show? I mean, what's your vibe? Do you see a theme popping out? I'm seeing a lot of content, uh, production, content type stuff. What's your... What's your take on NAB this year so far? Well, for me, it's always the big toys. I'm just fascinated by the big toys. So um, I haven't had a chance to walk the floor. I'm going to do that right after this. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going over to some of the, the red. I want to see the Lexa. I'm a camera guy. The post tools, I'm, I'm pretty knowledgeable about already. So um, play with those on a daily basis. So where do you see that technology going over the next four Ooh, or five years? Uh, wow, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think it's just going to open up more creative possibilities. And I think. Um, as um, more technology, pr affordable technology is available and tools for more of the independent guy, which is a little more in line where we are, not being a huge studio, I think the uh, talent that's going to surface in the next few years in the projects, what we're going to see out there with the channels that are available to see it on, uh, it's, it's gonna, the cream's going to rise to the top and the work's going to be amazing. And I really look forward to, so to seeing you, that. So for you, it's all about taking that high-end technology, bringing it down to a price point that makes sense for you and, and then bringing that to a much, much larger audience. And then eventually yeah. it sounds like it goes to the masses. I mean, It, it <laughs> does. And it's a little bit of a field of dreams. You have to understand what the technology can do and then you can figure out creatively how to apply it. Uh, if you don't know what it does, how are you going to dream about it at night? So definitely be informed and that's what I'm doing here. But it sounds like a lot of what you guys do is that, that creative piece, like you say, you need, you, you want your clients to talk about full projects, get in there, you kind of embed yourselves, right? Is that what yeah. you need uh, from your clients? You want them to give you some access to their, you know, best customers and the stories and, 
Yeah, you yeah, come well, in, you interview them, you tease that apart. Is it, what's that process like? Well, it's um, it's more than just pulling out a camera and lighting it pretty. It's really understanding who they are. Everything we do has to work within their brand. We're working with Fortune 500 companies, so we're not. It's not a mom and pa shop. We're not inventing this color or that look. Everything has to work within it. On the same time, um, we're always trying to keep it engaging. So you know, corporations sometimes very traditional. So we're pushing them as far as we can. And usually what happens is creatively we'll push them out of the box. And this is from a concept point of view. Um, and they'll bring us back a little bit. But what we find is there's a happy um, meeting point there. And in the end, they're just, uh, it kind of changes the way they look at visual communication. Well, a lot of times you must be herding cats. There's different agendas. <laughs> and, and so when you push them out of the box, they you sort of get their attention. Yeah. And, and well, show maybe neutralize some of the politics. You know, we haven't shot too many elephants jumping out of helicopters. <laughs> but um, we've shot lots of CEOs. And figuring out how to integrate a story. And a lot of it is um, the focus of their employees and their customers. So you kind of take that what is typically not very exciting and figure out how to you know, really bring that to life. Eric, we were talking prior to the kickoff of the, of the show this morning that you know, the web created web pages and allowed people to source information. You, know, you browse and create Google and search engines, all that good stuff. And you know, one of the things we, we, we shot the arrow for and said was that media is the new web page with mm -hmm. mobile and social and cloud and enables media and the idea of broadcasting content as that next set of content, but content that's interactive, content that's measurable, content that's on multiple mm. devices. So with that being said, I'm sure you agree with that, right? Absolutely. You, okay, so you agree with that, so cool. So question is, what do you see for the corporate corporations you deal with? Because Levi Strauss, they're a big brand. We've interviewed Tom Peck, their CTO on this cube here. Great company, they're innovative in San Francisco. But in general, corporations, if the web page is, was, became their website, Mm -hmm. as their core vehicle to do business. You can stretch and say, hey, media is their broadcast studio, is their new web presence. So if that being said, are you seeing that kind of forward thinking in the client base? Are they building their own studios? Are they really looking at this from a, from a design, usability, and uh, broadcasting standpoint? Um, clients, they absolutely are building their own studios because um, it, there's nothing proprietary. Everybody can get their hands on it. So if they have enough of a workflow, they certainly will. But um, I think the type of work that they focus on in-house and their talents is a little different than what we do because our specialty is this very narrow place and um, that's where we come in. I think as far as web applications, yeah, video all the way. Who wants to read anymore? A couple bullet points and hit play. Um, you know, it's a YouTube world. Yeah. So, And a lot of our clients are definitely Definitely um, taking notice of that. Couple bullet points, hit play, video's the way to go. Show real Eric Jackson, thanks for coming on and enjoy your walk around the uh, floor. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh,